Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you about osteoporosis. Yeah, osteoporosis is something that doesn't sound very good, and it isn't very good as it turns out. It's something you don't really want to have. And as the name implies, it means porous bones. You can see here in this diagram what normal spongy bone looks like, and even compact bone over on the side can become more porous as time goes by in your life. And so this video is an attempt to just introduce you to the, to the idea of osteoporosis, the disease. What are some things that we can do to prevent it? What are some things that we can do in terms of our exercise and our diet that might alleviate that? And then maybe even a discussion of some hormones that are involved in blood calcium in terms of the, the maintaining the dynamic balance between bone and blood and how that might decrease over time uh, with age. And so just wanted to say that, again, like I mentioned, osteoporosis is when the bone becomes less dense. And as it turns out, it becomes more porous. And when it becomes more porous, it's more fragile and more likely to break. And that could be a problem. Um, the thing is, it's the type of disease that it's not caused by a pathogen, but uh, it's the type of thing that just accumulates and it's and it's painless, and so you don't maybe know that you have it, and you and it's difficult to uh, to prevent it when you don't think that you even have it in the first place. And so, typically, what happens is that a person, when they're getting a little bit older, will have a fracture, maybe a serious one, to a hip or a spine, and then they'll go into the physician, and the doctor can diagnose uh, the condition of osteoporosis. And so this is something we don't want happening. So what we want to do is prevent it as much as we can. And so let me start off. I don't want to sound like I'm preaching to you, but I think if you uh, choose an exercise that you enjoy doing, in other words, you, you have fun doing it, it's relaxing, you do it with friends, it becomes a routine or a habit, it's more likely to be sustainable. If you don't like uh, a particular exercise, then you're not going to want to do it. It's, uh, and so just want to make sure that I point that out. And so as it turns out, w the thing about exercise is when you put stress on the bones through running or hiking or, or any kind of uh, aerobic sort of dance, uh, what's happening is the bone responds and it becomes stronger. It, it takes in calcium in order to accommodate for that. And so you, you get cells called osteoblasts that increase uh, bone tissue as a result of this um, exercise. And so this, this high impact exercise uh, can lead to preventions of things like fractures uh, caused by osteoporosis. And so though I personally am um, a fan of bike riding, which is a great form of aerobic exercise, it doesn't have that sort of weight bearing um, on the bone stress that other types of exercise such as running and hiking. And so let me recommend those things, like simply walking is beneficial. Um, you know, things, again, that are great forms of exercise, like for example, swimming is you know fabulous. I want to encourage it, but it's not as good to prevent osteoporosis because it's not this sort of weight bearing exercise, which is important to prevent uh, osteoporosis, it helps to increase the bone mass. And so another way that we can prevent osteoporosis in addition to exercise is sort of paying attention to our hormones. And so, you know, what, what's one to do? Well, if you know that your hormones are deficient or you've had a blood test, your physician can recommend some hormone replacement. And this is the kind of thing that you might need, maybe not as a young person, but as you, as you get a little bit older, you might need some replacement, some either real hormone or synthetic hormone that, that mimics uh, the actual hormone because these hormones, as it turns out, decline as we get a little bit older. So you might need a replacement. That might help to prevent osteoporosis as well. And so, of course, diet is major. So everyone might know that milk contains uh, a large amount of calcium and, and it's, uh, some milk is even fortified to have in enhanced calcium. And so uh, let me recommend that uh, if you feel like you're deficient. What's kind of interesting is I'm, I'm not sure if it's a matter of, uh, 
uh, milk companies increasing the calcium in the milk because it's important to reduce osteoporosis or whether the, the fact that you're more likely to choose to buy the milk if it says 20% uh, more calcium than regular milk or uh, ultra calcium fortified. Whatever it ca the case may be, it's, it, it's good to consume milk and it's, you're never too old to have milk. You know, a good strong breakfast with, with a fortified cereal and some milk um, can maybe even add a little bit of chocolate to it. That makes it a little sugar, helps the medicine go down if you're not a fan of, of, of milk in general. Um, but cheese or you know dairy products in general uh, contain calcium. Yogurt, again, another milk kind of product. But yogurt, let me put a, put a shout out for yogurt because you can get yogurt that is very low in calcium. And it's, I, I'm sorry, very high in calcium, very low in fat. Uh, the thing about cheese is that it can it can have sometimes a high fat count content. So yogurt, let me let me put the thumbs up for yogurt because not only does it have high calcium, low fat, but it's also a great source of protein, mm, which is also an ingredient in strong bones as well. When you when you look at the the collagen, it's not just the mineral salts. And then you go right down the line, you're like, yikes, sardines. You know what, what's that all about? Well, if you're eating these little tiny fish. Um, obviously, you're eating their their bones as well, and so therefore, that's a good source of calcium. So you could look at this. What I would recommend is um, searching on the internet for foods that contain uh, rich sources of calcium and pick the ones, not necessarily at the top, but the ones that you like. Again, it's if you eat something you like, no one's going to need to tell you to do it. So I don't want to preach to you about what to eat. You, know, you should you should drink soy milk that's fortified. Yeah, maybe you should. But if you don't like soy milk, soy milk then don't. Uh, this is what I'm going to say. So good nutrition begins with common sense. Uh, good nutrition is strong for the bones. But the key is it's sort of like putting money into a bank. If you think of your bones as a bank, uh, bank of calcium, the bank of calcium. And so the more you put in, the stronger the bone becomes. And so you'll be able to then withdraw that calcium in the future. And so speaking of withdrawing, like if you're a female and you're planning on having children, that's going to be a big withdrawal of calcium from your bone. So you want to store this up. And so what it turns out that even uh, Women, when they get a little bit older, I was mentioning hormones. And again, one of the most famous hormones is this hormone called estrogen. And so estrogen levels drop off as we get a little bit older in women. And so as it turns out, um, doctors may recommend replacement. And so in other words, an enhancement of estrogen uh, when you get a little bit older to help increase uh, the bone density and strength. And I also wanted to point out don't don't want to confuse you, but I think you could handle this. There's two hormones that are antagonists, meaning that it's sort of like a blood calcium is sort of like a teeter totter or a thermostat. It it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, and so it turns out that um, your parathyroid gland, which is on the posterior side of your thyroid, there's these four little glands called parathyroid hormone, and it's secreted by the parathyroid gland. And its job is to help increase the concentration of blood calcium. Okay, so that's withdrawing calcium from the bone. So this is what would happen if you're not having a lot of calcium in your diet. Parathyroid hormone will be released, and so calcium will be withdrawn from the bone. But if you're eating and drinking a lot of calcium, there's another hormone that's produced by the thyroid gland called calcitonin, and that helps to lower your blood calcium. In other words, you're eating a lot of it, so then that hormone lowers it by absorbing it into the bone. So that's a good one to have. So maybe when you're a little bit older, doctor might prescribe calcitonin or an estrogen replacement, depending. Because as it turns out, women in particular, you know, they reach this point uh, in their life called menopause. And so, um, you know, it, it's a point where estrogen levels uh, decline uh, as well as this calcitonin. And so the point is um, you need to be building up your bone when you're young. And so by the age 20, the average woman has acquired most of her skeletal mass. And so at that point, it starts to decline and the risk of osteoporosis increases as the age of the, of the woman goes up. And so that's something to consider. And so it's important for young women 
uh, to reach their peak bone mass uh, early in their life. In other words, invest. Put your money that you make in your, in your career into the bank, and then when you're older and you retire, you'll be able to draw it out and, and dominate. So you don't want to be a person that squanders and doesn't eat right, doesn't eat her calcium, has an inadequate amount of calcium uh, consumption. You don't want to be a person that has no physical activity because you can get away with it, but as it turns out, in the end, you can't because osteoporosis might be coming your way. This is Melky Cabrera, former San Francisco Giant baseball player and the various uh, milkmaids. <laughs> and so as it turns out, uh, the statistics speak for themselves. So one in every five women are expected to have this disease, and so it's more common than you may, may think. So if you look to the left and right, you'll, you'll find someone who's, who's going to acquire osteoporosis. But I hope it's not you. I hope you'll take prevention, do the right thing, go out and, and uh, have some fun, play some sports, eat some yogurt. So I hope this was informative. Thanks for watching.